Okay, so once again, we're back at the end of the last volume, the day the results were shown to the students. Class 2D faced a rather strange situation, you could say. It was one day I've never experienced before. Keisei's right leg trembled as he looked towards the entrance of the classroom, just waiting for Kiyotaka to come back. He was planning to talk to Kiyotaka after school, but gave up due to Horikta's appearance. Then after that, he heard Kiyotaka was called elsewhere, referring to the meaning about Shikishiro. Hasume sighed helplessly and looked out the window. She knew full well Keisei wasn't one to normally shake his leg and realized there was no point in trying to calm him down anymore. The presence within Class D was a heavy one. That very May, spring presented itself to everyone. It was clear, so Beautiful, Hasabe thought to herself. Then she thought about how all of this came about. The exam for second years and first years had to pair up. Within the fifth test, that being math, Kiyotaka Ayano Koji achieved a perfect score of 100. You see, this wouldn't be a strange thing if it was a normal test, but this test was far from normal. This very exam was a world away from the previous ones. This wasn't something that could be explained just by cramming studies the night before. As a friend, she couldn't leave Keisei alone. She then asked a question. Was the question that hard? Hearing that Keisei was fed up and had a look of disgust on his face, he got up and slapped- No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Too soon. <laughs> Keisei hearing this nodded and confirmed her question. He added it wasn't if the question was hard or not, but he himself couldn't even comprehend the meaning of it during the exam. In addition to mixing in unexpected difficult questions, the school also mixed in low-level questions. In other words, this exam was made so if you didn't get a perfect score, you also wouldn't get a low one. Aina Koji got a perfect score, which would be impossible. I... It's like I'm witnessing a magic trick. Using his last name, you could really see the resentment Keisei felt. Like, this boy is like so pissed off at Kiyotaka. He's just like, you know, I'm not going to call my boy Kiyotaka no more. I'm going to call you Aina Koji. That's, I, I hate you this much, right? So he solved the question. Kiyotaka Kun sure is amazing. Trying to change her mood, ID uttered this, but in doing so had the opposite effect. Keisei's face began to tighten even more. You see, he thought he assessed everyone's academic ability during the first year, at least to a certain degree. This is the reason he was so surprised. He thought no one could do the question just based on this fact alone. Do tell me more. Hearing this conversation between the Aina Koji group, Sinohara joined in. Before he knew it, many classmates were listening to what Keisei had to say. If you look at the app, you can see no one within the second year. Not a single student. Not Ichinose, not Sakya Nagi, not even Yuen got a perfect score. Facts would speak louder than words in this situation. Sinohara shocked, grabbed the tablet Keisei presented in front of them, and swiped rapidly. All of a sudden, Kei rang up the fact that Kiyotaka could be a maths genius, maybe something out of a TV drama. Hearing these words, Keisei dismissed them with a dumbfounded expression and replied back to her. And tell me why he didn't get a perfect score on the previous maths test. Keisei would not be swerved away from this. Kei tried to defend Kiyotaka a little more, but all Keisei could do was give replies, almost like he was taking it out on Kei. She vibed back saying maybe it was just him who couldn't understand the question, and maybe it was just him who couldn't solve it. Kei knew deep down her words were far-fetched, but even still, she didn't change her attitude because she felt she had the right to play the fool here. You know, my girl Kei is, you know, she's got to protect the hubby and that, you feel me? This still wouldn't work, and the atmosphere heated up the scene. The doubt on the student Kiyotaka Ayana Koji only got deeper and deeper. No matter what anyone said, it just wouldn't work. Keisei began to think of something else. He knew Kiyotaka had never gotten results like this before, and thought he may not have done this with his own strength. Just like in the first year, where you can pay the third year senpais to get past questions. The only answer would be cheating. Cheat? How would he even cheat? Sinohara asked. Hacking the school computers and stealing information? It isn't impossible. But like, Keisei is so heated, like, he thought, like, could you imagine Kiyotaka just hacking the school computers to get a good- It's just, it's the dumbest thing, but I guess Keisei is so pissed that his anger is sort of blinding him in this situation. There was one who was silent, though. That being Sudo Ken. He stood up, towering 186 centimeters over everyone. Instantly gathered the attention of the entire class. He seemed to be getting rather excited, but there isn't a shred of evidence Aina Koji is cheating, is there? Don't just jump to the conclusions when the person in question isn't here. Mm -mm, that's my boy Sudo sticking up for the boy Kiyotaka like a G. The fact that it was Sudo who uttered these words surprised everyone. In particular, Ike, who had been good friends with Sudo for a long time, didn't seem pleased. This motherfucker Ike isn't pl- Huh? This motherfucker Ike isn't pl- Shut the fuck up, expel Ike. He asked Sudo what he meant and asked if he was on Kiyotaka's side. Sudo replied saying it wasn't that, and he just thought Kiyotaka got a perfect score with his own abilities. Miyamoto then looked at the OAA. He decided that Kiyotaka had cheated. That just means he's different from last year. Anyone can grow, Sudo said. Kei added on to this, saying it's true, and even Sudo surpassed Miyamoto in her OAA. Just embarrassing him for a moment. But it was true, last year Sudo was the worst in the entire year. His ability had changed from a 54. It was one point higher than Miyamoto, but still, even higher. But again, this went full circle, heading in a worse direction. But isn't that even more of a problem? Does that mean he didn't contribute to the entire class? It was an internal battle within Class D. After a while, Hirata finally came in and pressed the pause button, getting everyone to calm down. He first spoke to Sudo, reminding him about his club activities. 
His goal was to reduce the number of students in the classroom. Soon after, there were a few students, but still more than half of the class here. Now in Kiyotaka's perspective after his talk with Sakishiro. He thought about his running with Hosen, and thought about his daily routine as a carefree student would return soon. Shabashiro was outside. She mentioned from this point onwards he may be a bit of a celebrity, referring to his test scores, of course. Kiyotaka said he wasn't happy, but this was a necessary measure. Shabashiro said he could ignore students from other classes, but how about his own? Has Kiyotaka really prepared for this? He said there was no use acting in advance and he'll start from this stage. Before reaching the class, he asked Chabashiro to leave his side, as it would bring unnecessary attention. She left and went towards the office. Even Kiyotaka could see she was filled with joy. There's no use thinking about her, so for the time being, Kiyotaka cast her to the back of his mind. He tried to contact Karita, but she didn't read a message or pick up her phone. Can't be helped, huh? The class was within sight. What would become of the situation once he enters? By now, a large amount of students would already be out of the school already, but that was not the case here. Karita, who didn't answer Kiyotaka's call, was also here. It would appear she assessed the situation better than he expected. The one leading to the commotion in the class was Keisei, of course, of the Ayana Koji group. Kiyotaka apologized for not being able to talk as he was called out. Keisei said it was fine and asked if he has time now. He wanted to ask a few questions. But in my mind, like, this boy probably has like 100 questions. This was a conversation between the two, but everyone was listening. Kiyotaka was on the front stage. Whatever words he would utter from this point onwards would definitely have an effect in the future of Class D. Keisei then asked a simple question, that being what was the deal with 100 points on the maths test? Going further, saying not a single student within the second year got that. Like I said before, on a normal exam, this would be fine. But this was no normal exam. About that. His eyes looked over at Harikta like he was asking for help. Harikta then got up and walked to his side. To then be interrupted by Keisei, said he was asking Kiyotaka. You could sense the intense disgust he had towards Harikta, stepping in as a mere outsider. Yes, but Yuki Murakun, I am the one who has the answers you are looking for. Victor then explained this all started spring last year, in other words, when they first came to the school. She carried on saying while sitting next to Kiyotaka, she found out he was really good at academics, even better than her. This was all done to avoid Kiyotaka attracting attention. You could say it was a little strategy. She did this in order to prevent a bad future for Class D, one where people could target him. He was basically a trump card she wanted to keep hidden. Let's take a scenario into account. If Kiyotaka went and revealed his abilities, then he may have been the one to get expelled rather than Yamauchi. In the process of doing that, that means, you know, you would lose your most powerful student. So, it makes sense on Harikta's eyes, so, pretty good. People in the class would ask, why reveal it now then? And to answer that, is the growth of Class D. You see, last year they were nowhere near the same level as now. Their unity and individual skills have grown leaps and bounds compared to last spring. But now, they can protect Kiyotaka with their own skills. And that is the reason for the reveal. Of course, these were just all lies. And Harikta didn't have any material to convince the class. Some still harbored their doubts. Things would be different if they had stronger backup. Kiyotaka looked around, and his eyes met Hidata's. In this current situation, he understood what his role was. Keisei then asked more questions. One big one to be exact. The student known as Aina Koji Kiyotaka. Has he shown the full extent of his abilities, or is he still holding back? Harikta couldn't answer. I see. I clearly understand what Harikta-san is trying to say. Right before Keisei was about to push further, Hidata made his move. He said that Kiyotaka is bound to attract attention in the future, so they should make full use of him now. Let the opponent see him as an unknown factor is the best course of action. Continuing saying there's probably people listening outside right now. Harikta-san is really good, isn't she? I'm a little moved. It was Kei, uttering a casual statement, then asking Sinahara for her agreement. I love how three people just came together to like bullshit, like you have Kei at the end. Just to like completely bullshit the class. And my boy Kiyotaka said like five words maximum, <laughs> like bruh. Even Keisei, who had been suspicious, was no exception. They decided to leave it there. All thanks to Harikta, everyone's doubts were cleared, at least to a certain extent. Even if Kiyotaka showed his strength outside of mathematics, it could probably be explained. It was said that Kiyotaka was honestly grateful to her. After a while, the students began to disperse one by one. Kiyotaka thought he would thank Harikta and Hidata another time. He packed his bag and walked down to the hallway, but was followed by the Ai and Akoji group. He pretended not to notice, but after some time, someone called out. Looking back, all three of them had stiff expressions. Going back without saying hello? Isn't that a bit cruel? Harika said. It seemed to have an effect on Casey, who was on the verge of exploding, but kept his mouth shut for now. After taking a short breath, he spoke, asking why he didn't tell them before, going further asking if he trusts them. Kiyotaka answered saying he's always trusted them, but judged not telling anyone was best for the future. Kiyotaka said he understands their frustrations, as this relates to his closest group, not to mention the fact that Keisei tutored them as well. Could you guys just imagine, like, being a teacher and, like, found out, like, you know, the one you're teaching is actually, like, a thousand times smarter than you, probably more than a thousand at that point. Finding out would like probably kill me. I'll be more pissed off about the time I wasted on that person. Casey knew he would continue to hold back, as that if Kiyotaka doesn't tell him what subject he will and won't, then he can't completely trust him. Suddenly Haruka spoke up and said she understands Kiyotaka isn't a bad person and she can understand some things. But he's bad with words and he just couldn't say it, she thought. In conclusion, Casey was still dissatisfied. He needed time to sort his feelings out. 
who would suppress his feelings for the sake of the Aya Nakoji group as well as his fellow classmates. Aidi, witnessing this all, decided to speak up. She gave the idea of them doing a handshake to reconcile. Even Haruka said that was a nice idea. Haruka forcefully grabbed both of their hands and said she wouldn't let go until they shook hands. It was stated that Sakyanaki got 91 points in math. Ever since the introduction to OAA, her strength couldn't be more apparent. Had she held back or start to study outside the class? That question could not be answered for now, but one thing is for sure. She would surely be a problem from now on. I and a Koji group decided to meet up at the mall the next day. 7am in the morning at the mall. Gitaka arrived too early. The clock pointed at 6.30am. Like, bro, if I woke up at 6.30am to go to the mall, I would honestly cry. Like, I'm more of a waking up in the afternoon person. Don't judge your boy. Gitaka had felt the eyes of his senpais and kohais would be on him soon. Soon after, someone called out, asking if he was waiting for someone. It was Ichinose along with Kanzaki. He replied saying he was waiting for some friends to go eat. They had both heard about his success with the maths exam. Ichinose as usual was nice and gave praise, not prying any further than she needed to. Kanzaki, on the other hand, was a little bit different. Questioning Kiyotaka mentioning he shouldn't have got a grade like that due to his OAA scores from last year. Kiyotaka just replied saying he decided to hide the fact he's good at maths. It should have been more than enough to convince him, but Kanzaki's sharp glance didn't fade. Trying to continue, he was stopped by Ichinose saying, Aina Koji is not our enemy. Sure, the lines between classes were no more, but Ichinose didn't see this as a reason to engage in a dispute. But even still, Kanzaki continued, but thankfully was shot down by Ichinose in the end and act like a good little dog like he is, shutting his mouth and helplessly averting his gaze. With that, Kanzaki left Ichinose and went towards the mall. Ichinose apologized to Kiyotaka, then they reminisced on something. It was something Kiyotaka told her, that being to stick with your classmates and go forward. He wanted her to trust her classmates no matter what, put their safety first and continue to fight. Ichinose said it was okay and she would definitely do this. Kiyotaka was relieved to hear this, but was still dissatisfied with one thing. Turning her head, Ichinose questioned this. He decided to make her remember the most important thing. The thing that would help her out the most this year. Keep her out of the dark and into the light. He looked into her eyes, lighting a blaze of fire within her and said, I won't ever let you get expelled. This boy Kiyotaka be too smooth, like god damn. Ichinose couldn't help but be embarrassed and mumble. She tried to change the topic. With that, they left as they were standing out too much. Right before checking the time, Kiyotaka was cut off by Haruka, asking what he was talking about with Ichinose. Not only that, but the rest of the group was there too. It was about his perfect score in math, of course. He explained it with a sensible reason, in case they seemed to understand, but there was still something off about Haruka. She didn't ask any further and returned to her usual expression. It'll be the 2nd of May tomorrow, and the students are about to welcome the arrival of Golden Week. Well, that would be cool if we got to see what was in Golden Week, but no, we skipped past Golden Week and we are back in school and a flash. It was the morning just after the week, and the first person that Kiyotaka ran into was Sudo. He also Kiyotaka was okay since the recent events, mainly referring to the maths one rather than the Hosen one. Kiyotaka said it was fine, and the same as before. They walked side by side towards the class. He didn't need to tell Sudo what happened in class, as he probably understood it all. But Sudo asked if he was hiding his ability in academics because of Horita's alleged strategy. Kiyotaka nodded a bit in agreement and caused Sudo to pout a little, being jelly as usual, you feel me? Sudo asked another question, this time he's a little bit angry. It was about Kiyotaka's fighting skill, and if that was a secret too. I don't know what you mean, Kiyotaka replied, pretending not to understand what Sudo was talking about. Sudo will not back down though. He said not to play dumb. You see, Sudo knew the real monster that was Hosen, was an opponent he had never faced before. He even stated that this was the first time he had ever been scared in a fight. The menacing smile of Hosen is burnt into Sudo's mind. Kiyotaka then gave some encouragement, saying he had a way to win before being distracted by Horikto. Sudo was just curious about Kiyotaka. He knew that Hosen was shook, and he wanted to know why. He then grabbed Kiyotaka's biceps with his right hand, then questioned his grip strength, but was around 60kg what measured at last year's sports festival. He asked Kiyotaka if he was holding back then. Kiyotaka said he didn't know, as he's never measured it. And to add further, he had the average grip strength for a first year high school student was around 60kg, so he adjusted his strength not to stand out. So to ask another question, how strong is the real you? A question filled with envy and jealousy. How strong, huh? Replied Kiyotaka. He thought about it some more. Masuda said to forget it. It felt like he was refusing his answer. Sudo felt there was no point if he didn't see it with his own eyes. He said Kiyotaka was an unbelievable guy and seriously powerful. Kiyotaka asked if it upset him. Sudo says he gets how Keisei feels and understands his approach. He added on saying he wouldn't be lying if he didn't care, but he's doing his best to grow in his own way. And besides, no matter how amazing Kiyotaka is at basketball, Sudo will always feel he'll be the one on top. Just laughing boldly. What's really cool, you can see Sudo's like, character development sort of branching out for the first time in his eyes. Even he went and said, Ayo, I'm trying to grow in my own way. He didn't want to show over jealousy and, you know, just great character development from Sudo. Amazing. Love to see it. Sudo said he wouldn't talk about... Sudo said he wouldn't talk about the whole situation but wanted to ask one more thing. That being if Kiyotaka thought he wouldn't talk about the situation. Kiyotaka replied saying if it was an old Sudo, then that would be the case. But the him now is a different story. And obviously Sudo asked about Horikta and Kiyotaka yet again. He wanted to know if there's anything between them. Kiyotaka replied straight up, we're not dating. 
an instant reply. With this, Sudo was relieved. And that ends chapter two. Pretty nice chapter, I'm not gonna lie. This, I think this chapter was actually like one of my favorite first chapters because it left off on a cliffhanger what we don't get too often. Usually start on something new. With this, we had sort of a cliffhanger from Lost where Kiyotaka sort of, you know, got his exam results. In case that boy was having flashbacks, yo. God damn. I've been waiting for this moment for ages. Just like a moment where Kiyotaka got to reveal his skills. At least, you know, to a certain extent. It's not his full power, but it's something to make you giggle and just get excited about seeing everyone's reactions being shocked. Especially Keisei, like I said, that boy was going through a mid, like, crisis and put on his Black Air Forces like Hirata a few volumes ago. So, volume though, the really fun interactions and the truth fabricated means Kiyotaka will be able to do more than before. Now, another thing what's great is a pseudo relationship what I just touched on and this interactions after the Hosen situation. Being calm and just knowing Kiyotaka isn't a normal guy. Let's also mention Chabashiro's excitement knowing Kiyotaka is the real deal now. Exciting stuff, it'll be interesting to see how things play out from here. And God damn, I tell you, it won't be normal like before. I'll go as far to say Class D is a real big target now. With that said, let's continue. April was a wild month. So many things happened. We are now two weeks into May. Kiyotaka thought about the White Room student and their moves. He thought things could be out of Sakishido's control. But he's not complaining. This way the boy can be in peace. While waiting for Horikta, he opened up the OAA. What just happened to update his values? Class 2D, Aino Koji Kiyotaka. Academics, A-81 points. Physical ability, B-61 points. Adaptability, D-40 points. Social contribution, B-68 points. Overall score, B-62 points. Academics was quite the raise, as y'all can see, but not much changing from last year besides that. And the OA clearly shows how grades improves for everyone. The one with the most improvement was Sudo. Class 2D, Sudo Ken. Academics, C-54 points. Physical ability, A+, 96 points. Adaptability C minus 42 points. Social contribution C plus 60 points. Overall score B minus 63 points. Compared to his first year, it was overall 47 points. You can see how much he's improved just in one month, yo. His overall ability was even higher than Keisei and Akito. If Sudo can improve his academics and social contribution, then he can go shoulder to shoulder with that of Hirata and Kushida. Moving on a little, Horikta dives. Coming a little earlier than a point at a time. They went outside and walked straight to school. It was easier to talk outside. He thanked Horikta for the things she did within class, adding that it left a similar impression in the other classes too. Sakanaki knew Kiyotaka's past. Yun had experience of being beat down by Kiyotaka, so naturally he probably knew that Kiyotaka wasn't only good at math. As for Ichinose, her word showed that she didn't view Kiyotaka as an ordinary person. Horikta asked Kiyotaka what he would have done if she wasn't there. He didn't even know himself. Horikta said that this was a favor, and Kiyotaka would gladly take this one. Soon after, she glanced at his left hand and asked how it was. It was slowly recovering, but it would take a while, he said. Kiyotaka mentioned it wasn't much of a big deal as it's not his dominant hand. Horikta then asked if he had any contact with Hosen since. He had not. He passed by him and Nanase, but they didn't say anything. Although their eyes were on each other, neither of them said a word. They then moved the topic to the 20 million point bounty on Kiyotaka, with Horikta asking if this was true. As of this moment, there was no proof. If that was the case, then you wouldn't do something like what Hosen did. So with that, I guess you could confirm it. They went further into this, with Horikta wondering why the school would allow such an exam. Which is true, you know, in Horikta's eyes, like, it makes sense. Like, why would the school do a special exam to get rid of a student? It seems like a little bit unfair, you feel me? In Kiyotaka's eyes and our eyes, is a little bit more clear with the situation with Sakishido and a white room student. They come up with another possibility that someone could be offering 20 million private points to get him expelled. Therefore, it might not be an exam, but just the student offering this amount. Someone who could pay 20 million private points and is trusted by the first years. It can only be one person. One man. The student council president, Nagamo Miyabi. Well, you thought this could have been the jealousy of Nagamo, seeing how Kiyotaka was always in Manabu's affairs. Bit off topic, but Horikta said she was preparing to go to talk to Nagamo and ask to join the student council today. One was to spy on Nagamo, but the other you could say was to see if he was right or wrong about the reformation of the system in the school. Is it Nagamo's way, or the past ways of Manabu? If Nagamo is going in the wrong direction, then there'll be a need to stop him. Not by Kiyotaka, but by Horikta. Horikta offered Kiyotaka to come, as he can use this meeting as evidence for him. With this, they were able to get a lead on the 20 million point bounty. This was like like one piece at this point. Like, uh, it might just be me, but this is the whole bounty talk. I'm like, bro, what's going on? <laughs> it's confusing, your boy. They agreed on this, made adjustments to go after school. But this, the day began. Now with Nagamo, he asked Horikta what she wanted to talk about. She wanted to get straight to the point. A clear voice echoed in the student council office. You want to join the student council? Nagamo replied. His expression slightly changed from surprise to anticipation. He said he wouldn't obediently say yes, meaning he wouldn't refuse as long as there's space and he'll allow people to join and not even care about the reason. This was different to Manabu, but he wanted to mention a special condition to Horikta's membership. 
Longo was simply wanted to know why Manabu's little sister wanted to join. But he gave the answer of having an argument with Manabu in the past, so she chose this school to settle it. But their relationship hasn't changed since she's been here. Felicity replies that she didn't get Manabu's approval in the slightest. And didn't even speak to him properly until graduation, at the very last second. Then she decided to join the student council and follow in his footsteps. The path he took when he was at school. The road your brother took. Really is a nice story. Nagama replied. He then asked Horikita if she intends to become student council president. Nagama then mentioned Ichinose was on that road too. Horikita said she didn't think it was a distance that can't be recovered. Then all of a sudden, Vice President Kiriyama spoke up for the first time. He said she doesn't really look like it, but Horikita really is Manabu's little sister. Nagama said from now on he'll refer to her as Suzune. He then left his seat and walked towards Horikita, stretching out his left hand. And Horikita gripped Nagama's hand head on. Welcome to the student council, Horikita Suzune. He gave her congratulations and even a tip saying the past student council presidents have always graduated from class A. Hukta said not to worry and she doesn't plan to graduate outside of class A. Nagama said to show him she's not all talk. The handshake that would have been maintained for long finally ended with the conversation too. From now on Horikta would use her own eyes to observe Nagama's actions. What would she do? What was Horikta's plan of action? We will have to wait and see. All of a sudden Nagama asked if Kiyotaka was thinking of joining too. He mentioned that Manabu had his eyes on him and he had no reason to refuse him. Along with the fact that he got a perfect score the other day. Kiyotaka said he would pass as his personality isn't suited to being on the student council. I knew you'd say that, replied Nagamo. Kiyotaka didn't know what he was thinking, but Nagamo quickly turned his attention to him again. I and Akoji, he said. With that, they started to stare at each other in silence. And Nagamo began to speak. He said there's a lot of work in student council, but finally things had started to calm down. So when the summer comes, he'll spend more time with his kohais. Before Kiyotaka could even ask him to elaborate, he spoke up again. I'll play with you, so look forward to it. Things are just heated up, and the senpais are coming to play, your boy can't wait, god damn. I would just hope Nagamo gets like a beat down like a UN, but like, I don't know, we really have to wait and see if that happens or not. Nagamo then asked Kiriyama his reason for getting involved today. He said he was just interested in Manabu's little sister, then asked if anything was wrong with that. His voice was a bit sharp from his nervousness. Nagamo happily laughed out loud, it was interesting to him. He said it was nothing, and not to mind it. Nagamo asked Horikita to stay there as he wanted to introduce her to the other student council members. We then move on a little. Kiyotaka leaving the student council office is now heading towards the entrance of the school. He thought about Vice President Kiriyama and his situation with Nagamo. He wondered if he was going to take action. He thought about Vice President Kiriyama and his situation with Nagamo. He wondered if he was going to take action now that Horikita was there. He stated that he didn't want to use his brain anymore today. Like, bro, that boy Kiyotaka probably spoke a little bit too much. He fought a bit too hard today, yo. He took out his phone and he saw a message. It was from Kay. She asked if she could come over. It must have already been 30 minutes since she sent that. And she didn't react or follow up on it. She must have still been waiting for a reply. Kiyotaka replied. He knew there weren't many places him and Kay could hang out without being noticed. Want to come to my room? He replied. And within a second, it was already read. Did this girl Kay like really have a phone open? Just like waiting? Let That's my best girl right there. I'll come, said Kay. Following up, asking if she could come now. Kiyotaka said she can come anytime after 20 minutes. It took Kiyotaka 10 minutes to get back to his dorm. He kept the door open and used the time to clean his room. He then heard three... And he then heard three fierce knocks on the door. Him and Kay had set up a few codes for a secret meeting. This mainly involved the doorbell, but he asked Kay to knock three times in urgent situations. Mainly because the dorms had a lot of traffic, and sometimes situations came where you couldn't open or close the door at leisure. Kay then came all panicked as she went through the door. She then used the force to push the door shut and let out a breath of fresh air to calm herself down. She stated that she was really panicked when she saw the elevator stop at the fourth floor. Kiyotaka replied saying it would be impossible for them to hide it forever. Even Kay knew this fact. Kiyotaka made precautions to use the U-lock. This is so he can turn a person back without even letting them in the dorm. He didn't plan to use this, but this was something set up because of, you know, Ichika, my baby girl. Kiyotaka asked if she wanted something to drink. When hearing this, she ran straight to the kitchen and asked how Kiyotaka's hand was. She wouldn't normally do this, but she happened to worry about his injury. Kiyotaka left it onto her. She ordered Kiyotaka to stay in the living room and added due to his math score, it would be harder for them to reveal that they are dating. Meaning the situation would continue for longer. The reason for this was if Kay was to reveal this now, then it would look like she's just dating Kiyotaka for status. It would look pretty bad on her. Kiyotaka added, dating a cute girl in real life is a symbol for status. Am I cute? Kay asked. Kay seemed to focus more on the cute part rather than the other part of the conversation. And added that she thought Kiyotaka is super handsome. The two would talk about useless stuff together. But Kiyotaka did not mind. We started to understand what love was bit by bit. Between each other, they began to feel something. The mood in the room began to change from what it was. Things were getting spicy. They did not speak a word. Instead, their eyes did the talking. Caught her gaze as she tried to turn away. Distance from their bodies, their faces gradually shortened. 
When they finally closed the distance, they could feel the breath on each other's skin. They could nearly touch each other. In two seconds. No one. Their lips would finally touch. They got closer and closer. And... There goes the bell. The moment captured in time was stopped by the doorbell ringing. Kay pulled away in a panic and tingled with a blush. Kitaka went to the door and wondered who it was. Kurita? Or maybe Sudo? Who knows? He then confirmed it. First thing that came through the door's peephole was red hair. Senpai... It was Ichika. Someone Kiyotaka hadn't been in contact with since the end of April. It was revealed that in the last volume, she was an accomplice of Hosen. He asked how she got into the dorm, to where she said she came in with another senpai who was returning, and thought she would give him a surprise. She said she was worried about his hand, and touched the U-lock with her right index finger. This. Can you unlock it for me? She tried to press further and get into the room, but Kiyotaka didn't want to ruin his date with Kei. Ichu showed a slightly amused expression, and said not to close the door. After saying that, she disappeared from Kiyotaka's vision for a split second. After that, she used her left hand to lift the plastic bag she placed on the hallway floor, so he could see what she was holding. Kiyotaka knew she had a sharp mind, but this is far more than what he imagined. She asked if he didn't want her in a room, and asked a further question, that being if he was alone. Because I saw her, she said. She saw Kei. In fact, she was watching her the whole time. She asked if they were doing lewd things. Kiyotaka said it was a precaution as they didn't tell anyone they were dating. Ichika said there was no need to lie, showing a disagreeable expression, and added she would keep it a secret for now, but wonders if she should tell. If Kiyotaka refused her, she may blab out to everyone. He had no choice but to unlock the door. When leaving the living room, she had her eyes set on the bed. She said their clothes aren't messy and the bed is tidy, so it doesn't look like they were doing anything. He spoke up like she was angry, saying it was a normal thing and asked why she came here. Ichika went straight up and said she thought they were having sex. Damn, let's go read on her back, huh? K was at a loss for words, her face couldn't simply be described as simply red anymore. It was a twisted expression what said, what was this person talking about? He couldn't burden K anymore and said it was forbidden by the school rules. But even still, each girl didn't back down. She said a lot of couples do lovey-dovey things openly at school. And if you go to the store, there are a lot of contraceptives there. Pr condoms, I can't be asked to say that whole word, so I'm going to say condoms, yo. She tried to buy one once and the employee pretended not to see. I guess if someone gets pregnant, then it becomes a problem. After saying that, Ichigo reached into the plastic bag and took out something. She put a condom on the table. Kei was at a loss for words as her gaze went back between the two. Ichigo said it was a gift. No, it was an apology. Kiyotaka said he doesn't remember having to apologize for something. She told him to quit playing dumb and said the wound on his hand she had a part in. She wasn't afraid of telling the truth. Is that so? Hearing those words, Kei was surprised. She said that she may have been misunderstanding her a little bit. I'm not Ayanokoji Senpai's enemy, she stated. He took a thought about the situation of Hosen and Ichika. Ichika saw right through this, mentioned she played a part in trying to get him expelled, but raised the possibility of his expulsion. That's why Kiyotaka would think it's ridiculous for someone to even say they're not an enemy. I don't remember underestimating you, replied Kiyotaka, even adding that he made a full evaluation on her. Kevin cut in and asked about the expulsion thing just now. She asked if Kiyotaka told her about the 20 million point bounty on his head. What? What? You said 20 million? She said that Kiyotaka should explain the details later. Ichika then explained about the situation about the knife. The tense situation carried on for a little bit, and Kiyotaka thought she could be the white room student. I was saying all of these things like she was trying to reveal her identity, but there could have been the case of her being like Sakinagi, honing her ability in another place without the white room being needed. She then said her mouth was dry and she wanted a drink, something like a coffee. Kei, who's listening to her, showed her undisguised disgust. Go make a cup of coffee for Amasawa, said Kiyotaka. Eh? Me? Kei replied. Kiyotaka added if she didn't like it, then she could talk to her instead. Kei obviously opted to make the coffee. She teased Kay a little, saying not to put sewage or garbage in her drink just because she doesn't like her. When Kay tried to give her the coffee, she said she didn't even want it. She just really wanted to tease Kay instead to make her make a coffee for her. He just said she doesn't even mind relaxing here. Then fine, go home, Kay said. That's what I thought. I'll go now, said Ichika. With that, she left like a wind, and the room turned into his original silence. Kiyotaka? What's wrong with that kid? I'd like to know that too, replied Kiyotaka. Kay was feeling angry and just irritated. She asked Kiyotaka to explain the 20 million point bounty and ask if it had anything to do with the injury. He didn't want Kei to worry, but this turned into a situation where he had to talk about it. So he decided to tell Kei about the current situation. And that wraps up chapter 2. And I gotta say, I love Kei so much. And it, it makes me a little bit like mad. I love Ichika as well, but I actually forgot about this scene in my first read. And I was just like, bro, Ichika, why do you tease my girl Kei too much? I love you as a Kohai, but like, when I see these two like butt heads, I'm always gonna, my heart's always gonna go in Kei's side because I love her too much. This really makes Kiyotaka suspicious of Ichika being the white room student, but she says she's on his side, so interesting stuff over here. Along with the stuff including Korikta and the student council, just cool to see where things will go in the future. Now, let's get along with chapter 3. 
middle of June was gradually approaching. There were no special exams after the one in April, and the White Room students still not made any moves. The only thing that affected Kiyotaka was the visit from Ichika. He knew that he would progress with Kei over time, and she would move on and progress to the next stage naturally. It was a sunny day outside, temperature around 30 degrees. The temper dries bit by bit, showing the summer heat would take over the spring breeze very soon. Soon after he was greeted by someone, while looking up at the sky. It was Nanase Tsubasa. Oh, it's you. Good morning, Kiyotaka replied. She asked if there was something in the sky. Kiyotaka said it was nothing, and he was just looking out in the sky. Just looking at the blue sky, huh? They haven't met in a month and a half since the Hosen situation. She said she felt bad for what she did to him, and asked if Kiyotaka hated her. He said he had no reason to, and he actually saw Nanase trying to protect him. He asked if the special exam was over, referring to the one about Kiyotaka's expulsion. She said it wasn't, and the deadline was at the end of the second semester. The other students know that Hosen made a move, and since someone like Hosen failed, it wouldn't work out, even with good preparation. Kiyotaka thought it was worthwhile for him to be badly injured. Nanase replied saying she doesn't think it's worth the cost of his left hand. The question was who was behind his exam? It would be easy to ask Nanase here, but the times he looked at her, she just looked away. Even if Kiyotaka was to ask now, she couldn't answer it. Thank you for understanding. She understood what he was thinking. They talked about the school and mentioned rumors about someone getting expelled in the special exam within the first year. It was a boy within class C. One day you could be laughing with your friends and the other you could be gone. The school life must be live without regrets. Talk about this matter a little more. Kiyotaka knew as long as Nagumo continue his policies, they'll definitely compete with each other sooner or later. Nanase just hopes she can spend her school life without any regret. She said to Kiyotaka he must not have any regret in his school life, suggesting he may not have much time left at the school. Kiyotaka said he would do his best to leave no regrets. With that, she was satisfied and took a leave. Showing how the first years had taken their second special exams at the end of May, there was only a little bit of time until the second years was announced. After taking attendance, Chabashiro showed something on a monitor from a tablet. It was time. Time to announce a new special exam. But before that, she wanted to talk about summer vacation. She looked at her tablet and an image appeared on the monitor. The thing shown was a picture of a luxury cruise ship. <laughs> mm -mm. I think we know where this is going, huh? She wanted to explain what will happen before summer vacation starts. A combination of a boat and vacation brought a different memory out in everyone. From August 4th to the 11th, they enjoyed the cruise to their heart's content. In other words, this time they were actually being promised a proper real 7 day vacation. The students began to ease up a bit. However, as soon as the images were cleared, the ease disappeared. But, in order for everyone to enjoy this cruise trip, must pass this special exam. Everyone was now on alert and changed their mindset. Looks like you're indeed learning, said Chabashiro as she smiled. Rikta asked when the special exam would be, but Chabashiro said it's during summer vacation. Because I don't know it was still too early to explain the exam right now, but they're announcing it a month before. What did this mean? Chabashiro then came out with it, and their thoughts transformed into reality. They would have to compete with each other on an uninhabited island special exam once again. Now you may think this is a copy and paste like last time, you know, like the anime one, volume 3 one, but no. It's a little different. This time there'll be more stakes and boy, more rewards, and hell, like, it's gonna be a lot harder too. The schedule then appeared going into detail through the exam. 19th of July, they'll take a bus to the port and board the ship. July 20th, the exam will begin and will be explained in detail. This is where supplies will be given. August 3rd, the exam will end and results will be announced on the ship, with rewards being paid out accordingly. Private points for August will also be paid after the exam. And of course, August 4th, the summer vacation starts, and August 11th, it ends, with the closing ceremony of the first semester on the 16th of August. Unlike the last exam, this one was twice as long, lasting two weeks. Someone asked if they would get a shorter summer, to where Chabashiro replied saying, as compensation, the cruise ship should make up for the two weeks they lose. The scale of the exam was set to be bigger too, meaning the island itself is a lot bigger. The reason why? You won't only be competing with your year, but instead, the whole school. Yes, all three years will be competing with each other in this uninhabited island exam. So the higher your year, the less pay you get, and the bigger the punishment you get too. Pretty much like the last exam we had with the punishment. The special exam allows you to form a group of maximum six people. If the people you group with are on the same year, there are no class boundaries, meaning everyone within the second year are allies. From today till July 16th, for a total of four weeks, they can select up to two second year high school students to form a small group of maximum three. But there are still rules here. You cannot form a group of first or third years. That also comes with a ratio of boys and girls in a group. Here are the combinations you can make. One boy, two boys, three boys. One girl, two girls, three girls. One boy, two girls. There were seven combinations in total. If you cannot form a group, then a group of one person can be established. But even Chabashiro recommends not to do this unless it's a last resort. Now, after the exam, the two groups will be able to come and form a big one. Two groups of three people, or three groups of two people, or even six lone wolves can form a big group. I know there's a lot of numbers here, but just try, try, try and stay with it. 
For the group to merge or even be formed, the percentage of girls just has to be at least 50%. Well, that's if there's girls in the group. Hitoka calculated this not taking dropouts into account. With every class in the school and a maximum of group number 6, there will be at least 81 groups, but not everyone will be in a big group, meaning this may breach triple digits. Chapashiro stated she could not go through the contents of the exam, but will state what abilities will be needed. That being all types of abilities. Academic, physical, mental, and evil communication. You may need everything. Students with higher overall ability will be beneficial to team with. They will also inform that if someone in the group got eliminated, it will be fine as long as someone stands in the group at the end. So basically, having less people in the group would only bring disadvantages. Now that the rules are set, let's go through the rewards. First place, we will receive 300 class points and 1 million private points, also 1 protection point. Jesus Christ, like yo, could you imagine getting that? It's insane. 1 million private points is wild. Second, we'll get 200 class points and 500,000 private points. Third, we'll get 100 class points and 250,000 private points. Groups in the top 50%, including first, third, will get 50k private points. Groups in the top 70%, including first and third, will get 10k private points. Class points rewards for the top three groups will be taken from the class of the bottom three groups. Class points are not related to the number of people and are divided equally by the number of classes. For more shown, if a group from the same class placed in the top three, then a reward will be major. Showing if you team with other classes, the reward will be split evenly. This will become a situation with the years robbing each other for class points. There are so many factors for this exam, and some not even covered, but when the time comes, your boy would explain it. Like, there's so many, like, I really don't know how the author thought of this. Like, it's literally trying to give me a headache writing this script right now. Like, it's painful. It is painful, yo. As a student, I'll be crying right now. Now the penalties for the exam. The bottom three groups will have three class points taken away, but not all. The bottom five groups will be expelled. Five groups meaning up to 30 people may be expelled in total. For example, let's take the worst case scenario. Class D would be reduced to 9 people if they were targeted. But this would be extremely rare, and you could pay 6 million private points to exempt that. Now with that out of the way, Chubbishiro asks if there are any questions. Bro, I would be dead after that. I wouldn't want to ask any questions. I would need this manual instantly to like, study this a whole month, yo. Chubbishiro wanted them to figure this out and do this themselves. There's no objectively correct solution to this problem. They have to think hard. And if you thought this was over, there was even more. The monitor displayed 8 items. Basic cards overview. 1. Head start. At the start of the exam, points you can use are multiplied by 1.5. 2. Bonus. The owner of this card gets twice as many private points from rewards. 3. Half off. In the event of a penalty, this reduces the number of private points paid by half and is only valid by the card holder. 4. Free ride. Where you designate a group at the start of the exam. Receive a bonus of half the private points won by the designated group. Joining the group would nullify the effect of this card. The owner of this card, if they are to be eliminated due to ill health, are given one day grace period to recover, not valid if it's due to cheating. And there are three more special cards. 1. More people. The owner of this card can join the group as a seventh member, and the ratio of boys to girls will not apply. 2. Nullify. In the event of a penalty, this reduces the private points to be paid to be zero. 3. Trail. Receive the right to get 1.5 times as many class points from the rewards of the exam. But the group will be penalized if they don't enter the top 30% and the school will provide class points from the rewards. Every student will receive these cards at random and they will be distributed tomorrow morning. Until the exam begins, they may trade or transfer the card and even maybe sell them too. The cards are not stacked so there's no point in getting two of the same cards. A rundown of the card rules. Yeah, there's a lot of rules today, y'all. This volume is pretty much rules, huh? <laughs> Both special and basic cards can be traded within the same year. You cannot trade within your class, and once a card has been changed, the owner cannot be traded further. And finally, cards are not stacked. Also, three of the special cards will be given out to each school year, with only one type being given each. With that, Chabashio urges them to think, and tells them a money will be given out soon. The bell rang and the first class ended with her leaving the classroom. Kiltaka then noticed Konji acting a bit odd as he left the class. He followed him, trying not to be noticed. Shortly after, he can hear Konji and Chabashio talk around the corner. She asked what Konji wanted, the way he said she forgot a key piece of information. That being, if a person falls sick on the day of the special exam, what happens? If that was the case, they will be penalized without special treatment. In other words, they have to pay 6 million private points from what they have on hand. It's impossible. Tonji even found this troubling. But he could not withdraw. Trapeshaw asked what he would do. Carry out his freedom? Then what? Get expelled? Even Konji questioned this himself. Gidda decided to go leave the place quietly, and all of a sudden? He asked who was hiding and spying on him. Konji had noticed Kiyotaka, but said whether they come out or not is up to them. Kiyotaka decided to reveal it was him, and Konji asked if he wanted anything. Kiyotaka said Horikta said to keep an eye on him. He walked slowly to him. 
his eyes appraising Kiyotaka. Konji knew he was lying. Konji even asked all of a sudden if he could join Kiyotaka's group. He rejected, saying he won't team up with someone who plans to quit from the very beginning. He then took a step forward and questioned what he should do. He decided to think about it carefully until the exam starts. With that, they headed back to class. Now back at class, the routine conversation of the exam continued. Konji also back took a mirror out as usual to look at himself. The class was discussing the rewards and them being split. Was it worth teaming with another class? How would Sakunagi, Yuen, and Ichinose act? Were they the same as Class D? Did they have these thoughts too? They fought the team of Class B to attack A as they have common interests. After school, the phones of those who had excellent academic and physical abilities rang at the same time. Hoikdo approached Kiyotaka as she watched the situation. It seemed like everybody was quickly making their move. Class D had some rules. That was not to make a group until they had an agreement, and if they were to decide on the group as early as possible, then they should contact Horikta. A little bit, Horikta followed Kiyotaka into the hall and asked a question, that being if he could get first place himself. Kiyotaka said to leave him alone, as they don't know anything about that island exam yet. He couldn't assess this yet. Horikta edged further, saying she was wondering if the person who got a perfect score in math could even need a group. Did they come first? No, if Kiyotaka does, then this would be a good advantage if they get all the rewards. Horikta knows a loop on the exam. That being only the first five groups get expelled. So what if they were prepared the points for them to fail? That would be good, but a total of 30 million private points would be needed. Rita asked if she can consult Kiyotaka again. If it's within an acceptable range, he replied. With that, she left. Very interesting stuff here. Like, everybody's just in a panic and just, you know, tries to think of a strategy for this exam. There are so many rules and just, like, I can't think of any way to, like, take this exam myself. Like, the amount of ways and routes you can take to this is many. And there's not one right answer, like Chabashira said. It'll be up to their own strength to figure this out. On the way from the corridor to the entrance, Kiyotaka was greeted by Ishizaki who tried to contact him. Kiyotaka replied saying his phone was dead. Forget it, it's fine. Just do me a favor and give me some time, he replied. Is that a threat? Kiyotaka responded. <laughs> That's an interesting joke. There's a guy who can imitate you really exist at the school? Ishizaki replying with his own joke. He also Kiyotaka was busy after. He was not. He then followed Ishizaki and a big wall that shouldn't have been there appeared. No, it wasn't a wall. It was Yamada Albert. Hey, he said. Hey, Kiyotaka wasn't sure to reply, so he just went on with the same word. Then Hiro appeared, saying, let's go. Go where, Kiyotaka questioned. They wouldn't let him run away. Albert was holding Kiyotaka from behind, with his immense strength, and Hiro was pulling at Kiyotaka's arm too. They wondered where to go, and thought of someone's dorm room. Hiro suggested Ishizaki's room. Huh? M -m my room? No, 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 never, replied Ishizaki, who was flustered and refused. Hiro asked why, and said if it was a bit messy, they wouldn't mind. Ishizaki said it was really messy and there was a bunch of tissues and stuff. He can't let a girl clean it. Tissues? Hiroi questioned. She didn't know what it meant. <laughs> this boy Ishizaki is down bad, yo. Boy got the nut room, huh? After a little bit of bickering, they opted to go to Albert's room. Now in Albert's room, Kiyotaka took a note of the flags hang up. Many flags from China, Italy, and a large American flag. Albert was a flag fanatic. After that, Albert released Kiyotaka, he urged him to sit. He asked what the three wanted with him. For some reason, they all had bad large smiles on their faces. Ishizaki cut to the chase saying he had a proposal. That was to be teammates for the next exam. Kiyotaka asked for more details. More details? Ishizaki questioned. That's all there was to it. Kiyotaka questioned the boy-girl ratio here not being right. They began to understand. Ishizaki wanted him to enter a group of two people from their class, and then when the exam begins, they will migrate into a bigger group. And then when the exam begins, they will become a six-person group. Hiyori, did you carefully explain the rules to Ishizaki? Kiyotaka asked. No. A straightforward answer. <laughs> he explained a little more and Kiyotaka even asked a little more. About being if they were talking to anyone else. They weren't. And they don't plan to. The reason why is that they reckon Kiyotaka was just as powerful as Yuen. No, maybe even better than him. He was good at fighting and his mental ability was even acknowledged by him. Bringing up his math score again. Everyone in the room seemed to agree too. Ishizaki stated if they make it to class A they were given 20 million private points to come to their class. Everyone in the room was for this idea. Not even Yuen knew about this. It was all Ishizaki's idea. You would never approve of such a plan. Kiyotaka left him to think about it for now. But honestly, he didn't even plan to form a group of anyone. This was because of Sakishida and a white room student that was still lurking in the first year. The first semester was almost over. There was no way they would keep putting it off like this. In the next special exam, the final showdown of Kiyotaka and Sakishida would occur. If he formed a group, they would surely get attacked too. Kiyotaka needed to make sure he was the only one who dropped out if it came to it. He left him while confirming this in his heart once again. The next morning, Kiyotaka woke up and turned on his phone. He'd been given the trial card. Never thought he'd been given a special card, he thought. From the maths exam to now this, he couldn't catch a break of attention. He could trade a card, but if he wasn't careful who traded it to him, he may be responsible for trading it to the group who comes first place. Kiyotaka went and left the room thinking what he should do. And bumped into the scene of in the elevator, both giving simple good morning greetings. Ike usually came to school relatively late, he was waiting in the lobby as they arrived. 
He looked at them nervously. He took a thought he was waiting for Suda, but that was not the case. He simply greeted Sinohara, then followed after her. Bro, my boy EK, you ain't gonna worry about Kyoto Kasilo Sinohara. Ain't nobody want what you got, my friend. It's a perfect combo, mid meets mid. Kyoto could slow down a bit, not to get in their way. EK and Sinohara began to talk a little. <sighs> I can't believe I'm about to cover like a whole EK conversation. Like, oh my god, like I'm actually yawning. Like, I'm a, like, <sighs> this isn't even a whole EK conversation, bro. This goes on for a little bit. I could skip this and like some of y'all won't even notice, but. I'm gonna cover it for the one EK fan in the comments, yo. Like, I ain't even hating at this point. Like, I, I, bro, I, I can't bear this. <laughs> talk about the exam and also they're teaming with. Sinahara didn't seem to hate talking of EK. EK was trying to sell himself to Sinahara, saying he could capitalize on his survival skills. Ben went and blurted out words he would surely regret saying later. Ben being Sinahara is one of the ones that risk being expelled, and he is offering to make some sacrifices to protect her. There's no way Sinahara willingly asked to join the group. Move between them started to change. But this man EK can't even talk game to a table at this trail, let's be honest. Right when that happened, Kushida came up from behind. With that, EK left Sinahara and rushed to Kushida's side. Sinahara looked at this with somewhat of a cold look in her eyes. After that, EK and Kushida went off. Kushida, of course, looked at Sinahara to ask if that was fine. She said to take him as she was being bothered. Despite the fact EK was at fault, he left together with Kushida with a spring and a step. Sinahara stopped walking with a somewhat lonely look on her face as she watched him leave. Bro, like, EK bro, how do you fuck up that bad, my guy? Like, I'm gonna be honest, like, the slander, like, is necessary here. Like, how is my man so stupid, yo? Even Kyotaka doesn't know nothing about women, but he has more game than EK. Like, what, how, how's that possible? He didn't interact with women like that for years. I don't know how. I don't know. Soon after, a student called Sinahara from behind. It was Komi of Class 2B. He also was strong and asked if she was crying. Why, she asked. Well, because your eyes are red, he says. Sinahara said there was something in her eyes. Not only deceived Komiya, but herself too. They began to talk bit by bit, and Kiyotaka gradually pulled further and further away from the two. Now in class, Horikta mentioned Kiyotaka's bad luck with a special card drawing. Kiyotaka said he had some of the same feelings. Horikta drew the half off card. This card would be useful for those who got the penalty, but if you aim for the top, it's useless. After a while, Ike shows up to class late as usual and raises his voice. Huh? You found someone to group with? He asked. Yeah, anything wrong with that? replied Sinohara. <laughs> My boy got NTR'd already, like Jesus Christ, god damn, EK is taking L's today. EK replied in a hurry, saying he just invited her a while ago, and has forbidden to form a group without Horikta's permission. Sinohara replied saying she would confirm it today. With that reply, he was stunned. EK asked who she would team with. Komiya-san was the answer. He found this unbelievable and asked if it was the flashy guy in a basketball team. He isn't flashy and I promised to meet with him after school in the cafe to discuss it. After saying that, Sinohara turned away from EK and into the students in the class. After school, Sinahara left earlier than usual. Ike just watched her leave, but then after quickly left class with a look in his eyes. We move on a little and Kiyotaka has a talk with Hirata about the exam, and some students in general, well, about Ike too. While at the mall, Kiyotaka says he forgot something and he'll be back in 10 minutes. Without asking questions, Hirata disappears into the mall. Kiyotaka then approaches the student, the one to be watching them. Chiaki Matsushida. She asked what he was talking about Hirata, to where Kiyotaka replied saying if it was any of her business. She said it was not much about her, but more about him. It was an important existence to reach class A. They talked about the exam and exchange contact information. Kiyotaka said he wouldn't be able to decide on his group at least for this month. They wanted to see how other classes move. Day by day, they got further from April, which was when Takisha had planned to expel Kiyotaka. Now back in the world, Hirata spotted Sinohara and Komiya. They decided they would find who was best for Ike to team with, if not Sinohara, and separated to gather information. Kiyotaka calls Ishizaki and explains the situation. He's sure Komiya likes her too. Ishizaki doesn't see a way to stop this and decides to speak to Horikta about it. He mentioned to Horikta that he could get expelled for his feelings due to losing Sinohara. Rita makes precautions to make Ike and Sinohara form a group, but it's already too late. She's already formed a group of Komiya and Minori from Class B. They have to take other measures to prevent Ike's loss of motivation. Now nightfall, we have a date with Kiyotaka and Kei. She asks about the exam also if he plans to team with anyone. He does not and Kei asks why. We obviously know the reason why, due to Sakisha though. But Kiyotaka gives an answer to allow him to move around freely, rather than being influenced by a group. If a student came in first place alone, the class itself will receive 300 class points. She asks if Kiyotaka thinks he's able to take first place. What do you think, he replies. They gazed at each other while Kei was still thinking. Kei can help but panic and say if he does, it'll be harder for them to come out that they are dating. Even so, she asks what are his chances. Let's say it's a 50-50 chance, replies Kiyotaka. Just hearing that's impressive. He then asks Kei who she's teaming with. She wanted to team with him, but that's not possible anymore. He was worried about Kei and wanted to protect her, who was short on points. But Kiyotaka was willing to prepare the points. One way was giving up a trial card. Kei asked if this was okay, but Kiyotaka says it's more important to prevent her being expelled. Soon after, the conversation shifted to the approaching summer vacation. The room's atmosphere got more lively, but still no progress in their relationship. Now we go to a conversation with Ichinose and Sakinagi. Ichinose was called out by her, where she told her something. You have no chances of winning Ichinose-san. In fact, she wanted to make a proposal, that being to team with Class C. 
Even if this was a trap, Ichinosa didn't see this to be a bad thing. With this, their partnership was on the horizon. Plus, he may be able to catch up to Class B and widen the gap from Class D. So how can I talk about the students who may participate as semi-eliminated due to health problems? She has the right to remain at the start point, under the same rules as everyone else. If they ask her for the advice, or even a problem, they can solve it together. But if she's the only one left in a group, they will be eliminated immediately. Ichinosa asked if she was afraid for the other three classes to fight together. If three classes all went for A, it would be troublesome. So I can argue was surprised by Ichinosa's counterattack and asked if she would agree to work together. If she does, then she will lend them a total of 3 million points for those who are at risk of expulsion. They negotiate more and in the end, Ichinosa accepts. Now this chapter was interesting. Like, like pretty depressing for like me, your boy, like I had to cover that much EK content. I almost made me cry, like literally. Not because it was sad, but because I couldn't stand it. But good info on the exam and how the strategies are playing out. With that said, let's continue. Nearly three months into the school year, and the first users began to understand the school a little bit more. They're also in the process of making groups. But again, Class 1D's host and refused to make a group and trade cards with others. Because of this, the first years were put in a situation where they can't form groups. There was a voice of a concern from the first years to ignore Class D. In response, Yagami of Class B calmed these voices. Finally, the deadline arrived. All four classes would come together to discuss a way out of the situation. Yagami arrived in a corridor one of the empty first year classrooms. As the one who proposed this, he felt the need to arrive before everyone else. After that, Utomiya from Class C came. We spoke with Yagami. Yagami thought Utomiya would be the one to come. Utomiya himself didn't feel like the leader type, but because no one else wanted to come, he opted to. We're talking about the student in Class C getting expelled. It was unfortunate. This was definitely a big loss. We wondered if Hosen would come. It was a 50-50 chance. Soon after, they agreed by Takahashi of Class A. He had come as the leader of their class dislikes these discussions. There were three minutes left until the meeting time. The three talked about this matter, saying there was no guarantee on anything, even with the exam like this. They had to sort it out here. All of a sudden, a man slowly walked out. It was Hosen. He said not to call his name out or he'll kill them, and ask if they finally decided on paying up to team. A bad joke, someone added. Hosen suddenly pushed Takahashi's shoulder, causing him to fall. Utomi was displeased, shot a stiff glare at Hosen, telling him not to get violent here. The two were close to fighting, but Takahashi said he slipped and to calm down. Utomi even grabbed Hosen's arm before he was able to make a fist. Oh, said Hosen, smiling happy about feeling the strength of his grip. He fought back getting into a fight, but fought otherwise. Utomi said Hosen must have been the one to get his classmate expelled. He remembered his face when he found out. It was like he was being tricked by someone. Sounds right. Sounds like Yamauchi, huh? Hosen then asked if he was accusing him. Tension sparked again. Yagami said they were wasting their time and asked if they should begin. They talked about the exam a lot longer. Yagami would try and get Hosen to lend a hand. They all needed the ability to compete with the senpais. Needed his ability. Surprisingly, Hosen said he would help. They would ask for his condition. The condition was the two remaining spots for the strongest team should be for Class D. Hosen said if they don't like it, then they could fuck off. This was the only way for all of Class D to work together, whether they liked it or not. If they worked together, they could make first place. Utomiya was reluctant, but accepted Yagami's words. With that, they left. The next day after school, Ichigo was at the cafe. She was Hosen and looked at the left watch on his arm. She mentioned that TikTok is annoying and dislikes these type of watches. Hosen told her to shut the fuck up and asked if she knew the worth of this watch. Bro, like, well, Hosen is wild. He just does not give a shit, huh? Worth, she questioned. Is it worth a lot? And added she doesn't have time for things she hates. Then they got to the main point of today's meeting. He wanted each go to the team with her on the island. She asked if he was thinking something vulgar. An island? And them alone? He just slowly lowered her across the legs and quietly opened them up. I was asked if he wanted to see her panties, then he could take a peek under the table. Faced with temptation, Hosen placed his right elbow on the table and leaned in forward. You think I wouldn't lay my hands on a woman, he stated? He just said not at all, and in fact she thinks he would beat a girl up as if nothing happened. Soon after Nanase showed up, seeing she seized the group Hosen had in mind was the three of them. After that, Nanase and Ichiko began to taunt each other. Ichiko questioned if the cute, lovely Nanase could keep up with her. Ichiko then stretched out her hand, trying to slap Nanase to rattle her. Nanase went and grabbed her arm without hesitation. You got guts, eh? Try and get here, she replied. But Ichiko said she's pretty good, and she loves strong curls. The three of them would form a group. They even talked about Kiyotaka's bounty. One side was laughing, and the other side was stone-faced. Three of them would form a group. They even talked about Kiyotaka's bounty. They were agreeing to give the bounty to Ichiko, but the reputation of Kiyotaka's expulsion would go to Hosen. With that, Ichiko left, and Nanase asked Hosen if this was okay. Hosen said this was just a verbal agreement, and it's clear he would be the one to get Kiyotaka expelled. He doesn't care if Ichiko would cry later. Hosen had no plan of keeping any promises. You really are a terrible person, Nanase stated. Whether it be Aina Koji, Duyen, or the others, Hosen will crush them all. He wouldn't let the school rules hold him down. He was so happy he couldn't help but laugh out loud. Now back to Kiyotaka, who was in class, being called out by Kushida. She said her first year wanted to meet with him. Haruka made the joke about Kohai confessing, but no, it was actually a boy who wanted to see Kiyotaka. He agreed, and the Aina Koji group went back to the dorm. Kushida rung the boy, saying they could meet now. Soon after, the boy greeted Kiyotaka. 
was Yagami of Class 1B, who decided to go to the cafe and talk. Yagami said he had some information on the 30th Island exam from when they took it. Since Yagami joined the student council, he took the chance to ask Nagamo. He also had a second year's did in their island exam so he can learn from this. And expected, Kushida began to explain the island exam in detail. Kiyotaka listened in silence as he followed them. When at the cafe, Yagami discussed the special exam, that being to expel Kiyotaka. It didn't matter if Yagami spoke about it now, Kushida was shortly to find out later from him anyways. He explained the situation, Kushida said it was strange that Nagamo turned the exam on his own. I wondered how someone had this many points, but if it was Nagamo, it may have been possible. When the exam was announced, Sakisha was also present, said Yagami. Sakisha's involvement was now revealed. They were behind the exam. This was all of the information Yagami had on the situation. Kiyotaka then noticed Tsubaki in the corner of the shop who was looking at them from time to time. She took out her phone and appeared to talk to someone on it. Was her purpose Kiyotaka or was it Yagami? Who knows? Yagami mentioned Kiyotaka to be careful and to watch out for some students who broke the rules, like Hosen or another person. Saying that, Yagami hesitated, then said to forget it and they should stop here. He felt it wouldn't be fair to that person. Yagami seemed to want to fight fairly. Soon after Yagami left and Kiyotaka was left with Kushida, she said he knows. Kiyotaka asked if it's okay him knowing something like this. They talk a little and Kushida said she would have to get rid of Yagami as soon as possible. Her eyes had a strange sort of determination saying this as she whispered. She said eliminating a Kohai would be harder than eliminating Horikta. From her tone it sounded like she already had a plan. Didn't you agree on a ceasefire? He asked. Only for now, replied Kushida. And added since she kept losing to him she would quit for now. See you later, Ayana Koji-kun. Yeah, he replied. With that, she left, and he learned Kushida seemed to be up to something. After he decided he wanted to buy something for Keisei and the others later, and also the person tailing him right now. So he decided to buy some snacks. He heard a long, drawn-out voice. As he was about to pay, he saw Tsubaki from Class 1C who was standing behind him. She grabbed a lollipop, most probably to bump into him under the guise of buying something. He said hello to Tsubaki and asked if he could do anything for her. She told him to wait outside. Soon after outside, Kiyotaka asked what she wanted. She said she wanted to tell him something. What was it? What was it she wanted to tell? Kiyotaka thought she would say it right away, but instead she just licked a lollipop and didn't say anything. Instead of being interested in Kiyotaka, it seems she was more interested in focusing what was in front. Is it Utomiya? He questioned. As soon as he said this, she stopped licking a lollipop. Looks like I was right, he said. He said he would be right over, she replied. It would appear she was on the phone with him at the cafe. Now with Utomiya, he cut to the chase. It was about Hosen. He mentioned April doing the special exam he teamed with Hosen. He never would have thought the person he had the arrangement with it was him. Utomiya carried on saying getting class D to cooperate with anyone on the island exam is a hard task. So what? asked Kiyotaka. We want to take Hosen by surprise on the island exam, he replied. His original polite tone became sharp as he tightly clenched his teeth. He was trying to force Hosen out of the school. If he withdrew from the exam as a first year, he was trying to force Hosen out of the school. If he withdrew from the exam even as a first year, he couldn't pay it for himself. It was a revenge in a way. Thanks to him, Utomiya lost 100 points. He asked Kiyotaka to lend him a hand. He couldn't give them an answer yet as he didn't know what was on the exam. Kiyotaka added that did they ever think he may have been Hosen's comrade and maybe he would make tell Hosen. Utomiya couldn't reply. For the first time he turned to Subaki who continued to stare at a lollipop. But after a short while she said, Didn't you get that injury on your left hand after you fought Hosen? She questioned. What makes you think that? He asked. Because of the 20 million point bounty, replying without hesitation. Kiyotaka then understood, even realizing that was why they approached him as partner. Even though Yagami informed him he pretended not to know about it. But even if Subaki partnered with him, she couldn't force him out of the school, he said. We can't answer that, was the reply. Adding they gave up on the bounty. Why is that, Kiyotaka asked. If they get him expelled, the news will spread throughout the school. Then they will make enemies with Class 2D. The only thing they care about is defeating Hosen. With this, they left and walked towards the dorms. Kiyotaka still couldn't figure out everything off Class 1C. For the time being, Kiyotaka would stay vigilant and keep in mind what they said about Hosen. It was a week before the deadline and situation arose. Vice President Kiriyama called out Kiyotaka. Kiyotaka didn't expect this and wonder why he was called out in broad daylight by him on a weekday too. When there, Kiyotaka asked what he wanted. Most of Kiyotaka was prepared for the exam. Kiyotaka feels he's done what he can so far and asked about Kiriyama. He mentioned that he wants to personally battle Nagamo in his exam. Kiriyama thought he wasn't any weaker than Nagamo, even based on his evaluation. The main reason for this is he didn't want Kiyotaka to get in his way. Kiyotaka wasn't interested, he mentioned. But what he means is that he didn't want to get distracted by any outsiders, referring to Harikta. He knew the reason she joined the student council. He repeated again not to do anything. Kiyotaka asked if he was in trouble. Yeah. On the surface, he was worried about them. Kiriyama wondered if it was strange to graduate from class A. He said what was the point for graduating from any other class, and added he won't sink to those in class B full of strange and incompetent people. If Manabu heard these words, he would surely be disappointed. Say whatever you want, he said to Kiyotaka. Kiriyama. While they were talking, a voice came from nearby. Although he was caught, he didn't react immediately. Kiriyama, can you not hear me? This time the voice grew louder. Speak of the devil, Kiriyama said to himself. It was a girl sitting on the bench. 
She crossed her legs and put her hands at the back of the bench in a relaxed manner. Comparing the face and name, it was class freebies Kitty and Fuka. Mm. Oh, best girl is here, bro. Like, she is already S tier for me. I'm going to say that out the way before I introduce her. I want her to step on me. All right, let's move on. What do you want from me? Asked Kiriyama. Fufu. You were the interesting underclassman, so I said hello, she replied, then turned her attention to him. She said Kiyotaka's name, and she heard about the math test. Kiriyama said it was none of her business, and tried to get Kiyotaka to leave. He got caught in between both senpai's arguments. Who was right to listen to? Kiriyama then said it should be for him to decide and ask if he wanted to join her in a meaningful conversation. Kiriyama mentioned she's a good student but doesn't have anyone supporting her unlike Nagamo. She even has no friends. Don't praise me like that, I'm getting embarrassed. She laughed boldly. Kiriyama added she was like Konji and you'd be wasting your time if you got involved with her. Kiyotaka was interested but thought it would be best to stay away. But she kept pushing and asked if Kiyotaka doesn't come to her then she would go to him. She then got up and was surprisingly tall, over 170 centimeters. Kiyotaka then took a look at her build and it was very surprising. She was very well built. These were the strange people Kiriyama must have referred to. Now fed up, Kiriyama decided to leave, so not to forget what he said, and depending on the situation, he would become his enemy as well. Kiyotaka hopes he'll be released soon. He asked what she wanted. Kiriyama just wanted to find out what type of person he is. She mentioned she came to the school not aiming for class A, she believes she can reach her goals without being in class A too. She came to the school on a whim. From her words, she did indeed seem to be similar to Konji, and the fact she has an A+, both in academic and physical ability, may show this. She mentioned that she liked the score and his benefits like the point system, along with people's evaluations not bothering her. After being asked so many questions by Kiyotaka, she wanted to ask a few. She mentioned that Kiyotaka doesn't seem like an ordinary person. This is what her instincts told her. She asked if he was aiming for the first place in the idol exam, but Kiyotaka replied saying isn't there any student who doesn't want to be first place? Except maybe for her, of course. Hideyum was one of the people who wanted to just get money. Class points and protection points were a second matter to her. She added whether her interest disappears or not will depend on what Kiyotaka does on the island exam. I hope your interest in me disappears, replied Kiyotaka. She said Kiyotaka says some interesting things for Kohai and looks forward to fighting him. With that, she waved him off like a stray animal. If Kiyotaka wanted to get first in the exam, he would need to beat Kiryun. After Kiyotaka left, Kiryun remained where she was. In her visions to Nagama along with Kiriyama who had just left. Hey hey, the loyal dog came back with his master, she said. This woman is a real pain in the ass, said Kiriyama. Kiryun then said he has a foul mouth and it doesn't suit the image of the vice president. Nagama said not to mock his beloved student council member. They continued the banter a little bit and Nagama forcefully sat beside Kiryun. Then got to the point, said he heard something interesting for Kiriyama, that being he never would have thought that someone who wasn't interested in Manabu would be interested in Kiyotaka. She said Nagama seems to misunderstand some things. She doesn't care for other people, and she talks to people she's interested in. There was even a time she was interested in Nagamo, and even Manabu, saying that she stroked the end of his bangs. Then asked about his love life in the past three years. Nagama fired back saying a woman who's never been in love can understand. He then got back to the topic and asked if Kiyotaka was worth keeping an eye on. He didn't add that he's a cute underclassman, and she paid him some lip service, but that's all. Well, I want some lip service on Kiryun, if you get what I mean, but uh, let's move on. She said she would leave it on hold for now, as she couldn't get a grasp of his true motives. But who is at least more interesting than him, she added. You're the only one in the third year who could say such disrespectful things to me. Then Nagama brought his mouth closer to her ear and whispers, If you think you're better than me, then let me show you your place. Alright? He challenged her to the island exam. He added he gave her many chances, but still remains in class B. Kiriyama and Nagama's class competed in many special exams in the past, but Kiryu never helped, and as a result, they fell from A to B. Making the end of their conversation, Nagama got up. Kiryu added, although she put the evaluation on hold, Kiyotaka is still an interesting student. One of the reasons Nagama approached her was for Kiyotaka, she thought. Interesting, Nagama replied, adding Kiyotaka's personality is far from it. She laughed as she saw the fish took the bait, saying a predator doesn't reveal his fangs and mention his math score. She added it wasn't his aura he had an abstract on, different to him and Manabu and asked Nagama to test him, maybe. He was thinking the same. He wanted to see Kiyotaka's true power. Nagama then said his true reason for contacting her. He came to ask for help. She wanted to get a high score on the exam. Instead, she left him with some tips. Nagama didn't want to take them. But she said them anyway. You should look what's in front of you, instead of playing with your kohais. If you pay too much attention to those behind you, you'll get badly hurt. What a boring monologue, replied Nagama. Saying that, he left. And we end the chapter. And let me say first of all, Kiryun is S tier. I love her. I wanted to step on me. She's my waifu. She can sit on me. She'll do whatever she wants to me, yo. But I feel like what Kiryun just said will sort of come to light because it's really weird, right? Kiryun is in a, like, you know, like Konji. She's chilling back and we've seen she has A plus in academic and a physical rating, right? So this means she's hella smart, but she just doesn't give a shit. What if at the last moment, she literally just like, I, now I care. I was juking you. And she's just gonna still class A from Nagamo. That would be a wild situation. I feel like that's actually gonna happen, but we have to wait and see. On this day, Kiyotaka would head to the mall. 
Along the way, he ran into Kanzaki. Going to the mall at this time, he questioned. I won't have any time to relax after the exam starts, he replied. They just spoke about the exam a little bit. Gitoka added, even though they broke off the alliance with Class C, he doesn't see Ichinose as an enemy. He said they underestimated his perceptiveness. And he had this strange feeling. But no, he is the reason for Class D doing so well. Who knows, replied Kiyotaka. Kanzaki came out and said he wanted to ask for help. He knew Ichinose trusted Kiyotaka a lot. Kanzaki wanted Kiyotaka to change the way Ichinose thinks. He thought about it for a moment. What fate would await Ichinose was anyone's guess. But when she's fallen so far, the next fall would definitely be her last. He wondered what... He wondered if he should tell Kanzaki these thoughts, but opted not to, as he wouldn't improve the situation. Kiyotaka just said one has to care for their own class by themselves. Kanzaki knew this, and he says he may have been a little bit childish. He would come up with a solution on his own. Saying that, he left. He arrived at the mall, and two guys who weren't usually together were. It was Duen, one who called out Kiyotaka, and the other being Katsuraki, looked at Kiyotaka with a stiff expression. They all sat down, and Duen smiled suspiciously. He said Kiyotaka never had a vibe of an ordinary student, and the perfect score math was quite the trick. Duen then cut to the chase. He asked Katsuraki what class A was aiming for in the next exam. Katsuraki asked what he meant, and said they're all aiming for the same thing. Duen meant in specific, and asked if they're aiming to monopolize class points, or something else. I mentioned the fact that they formed groups of class C. It seemed fishy to him. He asked if they were teaming. Katsuraki said he can't confirm it and leave it up to them to interpret how they want it. Yun didn't want any of this crap and wanted straight answers. He told the Katsuraki a little saying he used to be a worthy opponent and asked if he wanted to crawl back to the top again, saying Totsuka who got expelled is all gone now. Hearing that, Katsuraki slammed his fist onto the table. Yun carried on saying it would be an interesting development if they were able to get Sakyanagi expelled on the next exam. Adding if she isn't there then class A will have a leader again. Katsuraki said this was impossible. Yun said that was a joke and the objective is not to kick your enemies down but to climb up instead. Kiyotaka can now see the direction this conversation was heading in. They talked a little more and Yuan turned his attention to Kiyotaka. He tried to play dumb for most of the things Yuan said, but in the end he told him to quit it and mentioned how he got beat by him and shut up too. Kotaki turned and asked if this was true. Yuan confirmed saying he got his ass handed to him and in the process nearly quit school. When he heard this, Kotaki started to connect the dots. He said if Kiyotaka would continue to hide it, he would just keep talking. Kiyotaka replied saying even if he does admit it, does he think he will help? Me and the two bigger Kotaki sighed. He couldn't accept this. He couldn't believe Kiyotaka beat Yuen. Yuen continued to tease Kataragi, saying it doesn't feel good losing and losing, not be able to get revenge. He got angry yet again, and it looks like he was about to grab Yuen. Yuen then found what he was looking for in his eyes, and then said, Come to Class B, Kataragi. Such a bold invitation, Kiyotaka thought. He stopped for a second and contemplated his proposal. He asked if he was crazy. Yuen said they'll pay for the points he doesn't have. He thought about it longer, and then went for the specifics of it. Kataragi asked why Yuen would go so far for someone like him. He laughed and said he has a low opinion of himself, and being honest, he doesn't go for cheap. If Sakunagi was to get expelled, Katsuragi would take a position as leader, and Class A could still stand. However, if Katsuragi was not there, then Class A would surely collapse. That was the reason why Duan would pay as much as it takes. And according to the OAA, Katsuragi would be the top student in Class B. Class B would have nearly no money left, but if they could get as top student, it would be totally worth it. Yuan then took a contract out. This was to prevent Katsuragi from taking this huge sum of money and use it for other purposes. For that, Katsuragi slowly signed. Yuan then asked what Kiyotaka was doing. But Kiyotaka replied saying he wondered what coffee would taste like being diluted three to four times more than normal amount. You're strange by I know Koji, Katsuraki said with a disgusted look on his face. Bro, I leave my minds alone. Like he's just trying to vibe with coffee. Come on. The reason for Kiyotaka being here was for the trial card. You even wanted it. You'd be able to get it for 500k points or so. But that came one more condition for Kiyotaka. That's to trade the half off card for the free ride card. If they accept, he will sell the card. This is all to protect K. Best boyfriend Kiyotaka. Cuckoo, I guess it's settled there. The half off card, eh? Just happens Katsuraki has it, right? Ryan replied. If Yuan has the trial card and he gets first place, he will get 450 class points. With that, their points will break to 1000 mark. It was soon July 16th, the deadline for the small group formation. He was greeted good morning by a phone call from Ishizaki. We talked about groups and how most of them formed a group of two people or more. There was still one problem with one student. That being Ibuki. Kitaka said he had an idea and asked him to wait. In the elevator after his, Horikta was the person he was waiting to meet. She was one of the few students who didn't seem like they wanted a group. He mentioned last time she got sick and this led into Ibuki. He mentioned the situation and she said she would hear Ibuki out. During lunch they met up. Rikta was creeped out by Ishizaki's attitude. He's a nice guy, said Kiyotaka. Even so, I wouldn't get too close to him, replied Horikta. Oh, my poor man's Ishizaki. It's not like Ishizaki a fair bit, but come on, Horikta. Now with Ibuki, she asked why the other two were there. Ishizaki mentioned her teaming alone. That's my choice, replied Ibuki. He added Horikta also doesn't have a partner. Don't tell me you want me to team with Horikta, she added. And also made Ishizaki boss. And apart from his physical ability, he's not good for much. She already added that she hates this guy a lot. But her hatred for Horikta is even higher. This guy? Even Kiyotaka knew she was referring to him. Ayanokoji doesn't seem to like you very much, Horikta said to him. He added that he didn't notice, but it seems like she hates you even more, replied Kiyotaka. I'm honored, said Horikta. 
Ibuki seems stung by the two whispering to each other and then bothered to hide her displeasure. She started to start on Harita saying she doesn't remember her wanting to be in a group with her. She then provoked her saying she may have got things mixed up and she got left behind because nobody wanted to team with her, not because she wanted to be alone. Ibuki wouldn't team with Harita. She said she would go on alone and merge with a group if necessary. They soon left and Kyoto got asked if Harita knew Ibuki wouldn't accept from the beginning. Harita replied saying she wanted to provoke her into doing something reckless in order to disqualify her. She wasn't being honest with herself, but this kind of answer felt very much like her. It was now a day before the exam started. Students were making sure they packed everything. Chabasho then entered the class with a final check and said if anyone's not feeling well, then they have to report it now. But no problems, Chabasho turned off the monitor and confirmed all necessary things before leaving. Before leaving, she gave some advice. Saying they'd been in the school for more than the inn, overcame a manner of all hardships. This exam would not be an easy one to pass. She just has one wish for all of them. If they can, they do not let a single one of their classmates disappear to never return to the class again. Gather for a roll call in 10 minutes. Soon after, Konji wanted to talk to Horikta. This attracted everyone's attention in the class. He said he wanted to talk about something about the exam. Konji wanted to make a deal. If he is to get a good result, then he wanted to be promised full freedom. The class went silent for a moment due to the statement. This wasn't something Horikta could easily agree to. Konji said to consider this payment before graduation. But Horikta naturally kicked away this idea and says she puts too much value in his talent to do this, but with some conditions, it could be acceptable. She said if Konji could get first place in the exam, she would consider it. I see, I see, said Konji. He laughed and said it was a good deal. With that, they made a deal, but that wasn't all the conditions. If Konji doesn't get first place, then he would have to help the class in the future in the next special exams. He had to make a promise. If he accepts, then this would be a done deal. Thankfully, he did, and the deal was finalized. She asked if he could really get first place, to where he replied saying there's nothing he can't do. Oh boy, we're about to get Koji 100%? That just sounds fucking wild. I think it's 100%. We'll see, we'll see. People within Class D could only wonder what would happen. Who was going to make the throne on top of the hill in two weeks' time? And who would be leaving the school? That long summer was about to begin. That was Sakisha though, in his point of view. He mentioned it's getting hotter and hotter. Yes, you're right, a first year student replied. He asked if they're done with their analysis yet, and prolonging it won't help them any longer. You're saying I should expel Ayana Koji Kiyotaka, they question? They said they wouldn't hesitate anymore. Sakisha said it was good to hear, and they're free to go berserk during this special exam. Once everything is taken care of, they will both return to the place they're both supposed to be at. The girl's left hand then tightly clenched upon hearing this. Sakisha gently smiled upon seeing this from his side view. I'm expecting great things from you. Nanase Subasa-san. And with that, we end Year 2, Volume 2. God damn, what a long script I have to write. And I gotta say, this, this volume is, like, I don't know how to feel about this. Like, I like it, but at the same time, it's so information-based. And trust me, if you guys don't like it, this is just build up for two and for three and four. For a volume to take all of it to be an explanation just shows how big the next two are about to be. It's about to be wild. It didn't progress the series in much ways, but it's just to build up the next two, like I said again. Nice though, nice, nice character interactions. The highlight of this for me was Body Kitty, and like I love seeing a character like that. Amazing. But pretty much apart from that, we didn't really get much. It was this explanation and strategy for the exam. Now, if, there, if you notice some stuff cut, like, more than usual, it's because I want to get to the next video as soon as possible and hopefully have it out as soon as possible. I don't want to put a date on that yet, but I'm going to aim for next week. I'm going to try and, like, work on it bit by bit for, like, a whole week so I spread out the workload and maybe I might be able to get it out within next week. We'll see, though. We'll see. I'm trying to speed up the process because, you know, I had I had a bit of exam work. I had a bit of uh, assignments due. So if there wasn't a video for four weeks, this is why. And, yeah, your boy's been a bit busy. Also, I had to rewrite this whole script because, goddamn, um, I must have been writing this when I was tired, but I looked at it in one morning and I was like, what the hell was I writing? So I had to cut half of it out and I was just rearranging some stuff and, you know, making the script a bit better. So, overall, pretty info-based vault and it's all to highlight the next two volumes. Yes, the very next two, three and four will cover the island exam arc. Long, long stuff ahead and oh boy, it's spicy. So stay tuned. But that said, I appreciate any likes and subs on the videos. It really helps your boy out, especially if you dislike <laughs> dislike or like the video. Dislike, uh, your boy might be a bit offended. But if you like the video, your boy will be very happy. Try and aim for 1k likes as usual. Push it on the algorithm. You know, everyone can see the amazing GOAT series, Classroom the Elite. And we're trying to get to 10k. I'm trying to get 10k by the end of July. Your boy's going to be on the content grind. I'm trying to take the rest of June to sort of plan the videos for July and go up 100% during it. Also, sub to the Patreon if um, you want sort of early access to Classroom Elite. I'm going to hopefully start putting that on here with the next video. And it helps your boy, you know, put more money into the videos, make the video quality high higher for not just this, but a lot of other videos on the channel. Now, I'm going to head out. You're probably going to go eat now. <laughs> My brain is fried. Stay tuned for the next video coming very soon. I'll see you next time. Sensei, out.